Hey guys, it's Dawn. Welcome back to my channel. If you're wondering why I'm looking so delightful right now, it's because it is currently oh but 30, otherwise known as almost 5.30 in the morning. The reason I'm doing this, besides, you know, a deep-seated self-hatred, is my challenge that I'm doing with Rebecca Rodriguez um, to do self-care during the whole year. Um, specifically in January, we were doing changing your writing routine. The thing I decided to do this month isn't working. I was supposed to go to the library like once or twice a week after my husband got home from work and it's just hasn't been happening. Our library doesn't stay open that long. And then, you know, by the time my husband gets home and we get dinner ready and I get to catch up with him after work, there's just not time <laughs> to go to the library. So. I had to scrap that and I decided instead for some reason <laughs> to try out the um, 5 o'clock or 5 a.m. writers club which is full of crazy people including me today um, but I originally heard about the 5 a.m. writers club from Rayleigh Bradshaw I mean I think she has been doing it since the start of her channel so she's been crazy since the beginning <laughs> sorry Rayleigh but I mean she always seemed like she's had a lot of success with it and it's worked really well for her. And just after examining my life recently, um, I've thought that, well, maybe if I got writing done in the morning, that would benefit me. <laughs> you know, maybe I could actually get writing done, period, then. So that's what we're doing. And that's why <laughs> your girl looks like this. Anyways. That's not even really related to what this video is about, which is me finally doing my part of the AuthorTube story tag. The AuthorTube story tag was created by Rayleigh Bradshaw. Once again, shout out to Rayleigh Bradshaw months ago. Um, and it's basically the concept is a bunch of us AuthorTubers are writing a, I don't know if you consider it just a short story, novella, whatever. We're writing a story together based on the beats from Save the Cat and so we all are signing up for different beats and stuff and so I signed up for beat number five which is the debate and the previous beat was by Amara Franklin um, and she did the catalyst and she uploaded her video about it approximately mm, five million years ago so I am super behind. It was just really bad timing. Like, <laughs> she uploaded hers and then we moved into Preptober and then NaNoWriMo and then the holidays and now it's January and I'm like, mm, I guess I should do that. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. I have already written about half of my beat just off camera over the last couple days or so. I thought it'd be fun to do, like, devote my first 5 a.m. writing session, finishing that real quick, um, and then I guess I'll read it out loud to you, because um, in the previous videos people have been doing that, they've been reading their um, beats out loud for the video, so <laughs> stay tuned for that treasure. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing right now. Hopefully it'll turn out, because I don't want to ruin this collab and have everyone be like, well, the story's dead now. <laughs> That's pretty funny because um, the story, like, I can tell everyone's like trying to like make everything connect, but everyone is adding their own flavor to it. Not only the writing style, but like almost the genre, <laughs> which is really fun because it started out like Rayleigh set it up as a Western and then Rebecca tried to turn it in like a romance direction. And then Peggy focused back on the Western and then Amara girl came out of nowhere and was like time for murder which I'm here for because your girl writes pretty gritty stuff <laughs> I write urban fantasy so no stranger to writing violence so I'm kind of piggybacking off of what she did in the catalyst um, tying up some loose ends because she left things kind of open for interpretation so I'm like tying up those loose ends and then having 
the main character have his debate about what he's going to do next. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's jump into this. Alright, guys. Wish me luck. Alright, so I am all finished writing the scene, so now I will read it to you guys, and then I will talk about how I feel about it and wrap up the video. Oh no, Des groaned, wiping the vomit from his mouth. I killed her. I killed Eugenia. The realization was like a ton of bricks in his gut. He sank to the cold, dusty floor, pressing himself against the stone wall of the cell. A shuddering sob rippled through his body, shaking every muscle from his head to his feet in a wave of emotion. It was all coming back to him now. How he'd furiously confronted the prince, demanding an explanation, Alonzo's coy, dismissive smile in response. Then later, as the prince practiced roping a saddle stand, a folded sheet of paper slipped out of his back pocket and fluttered to the ground. Des snatched it up without hesitation, keeping one eye on the other man's back as he crammed it into his own pocket to examine later. And later he did. The words of the note etched themselves into his brain like scorched earth after a bushfire. My dearest Alonzo, meet me in the cornfield behind the general store. I'll be waiting behind the old wagon that sits near the far end of the property. Yours, Eugenia. In a haze of red-hot rage, he wandered into the saloon, down shot after shot of whiskey, until every last penny to his name passed into the barman's hands. The drink seeped into his hurt and nurtured it, coddled it, fed it, until the only thing that made sense in his drunken stupor was that Alonzo, that two-timing rat, had to pay for his betrayal. As he staggered down the dusty street and into the narrow opening between the general store and the doctor's office, his bleary eyes fell onto a four-pronged hoe leaning against the wall of the store. He remembered the feel of the rough wood against his skin, the unbalanced weight of it in his hand as he plunged into the field. Stalks of corn were trampled beneath his careless, heavy feet. He couldn't see where he was going over the sea of corn, but he just kept walking, just kept forcing his clumsy legs to take one uneven step after another. Somehow, he made it to the wagon. Beneath it, a swaying shadow fueled his anger again, and he clutched the hoe in front of him with white-knuckled fists. He crept as quietly as the whiskey would allow, easing himself around the back of the wagon, watching the shadow shift back and forth. Another stalk of corn crunched beneath his boot, and a small, uncertain voice called out to him from the darkness. Alonzo? But it didn't register in his mind that the voice was too gentle, too female, to be his double-crossing friend. Without answering, he lifted the hoe over his head and swung it into the shadow as it took a step toward him. A startled, horrified shriek emitted from the form, shattering the sleepy quiet of the night. Dez's vision became edged with black and red as he struck again and again, burying the hoe with ferocity into the screaming shadow. It collapsed to the earth, flailing and trying in vain to escape the onslaught. Droplets of warm something sprayed onto Dez's stone, emotionless face each time he pulled the hoe back to prepare for another strike. The sounds coming out of the shadow changed from screams to moans to a wet, guttural gurgle. Des, it spluttered once, his name barely understandable through its slurred lips, but it was enough to finally give him pause. And that's when he realized it was Eugenia. Des closed his eyes, digging his fingernails painfully into the cell wall. The full horror of what he had done was too much to face. Even still, another image surfaced on the water of his bubbling, frothing mind. Alonzo, that smug, selfish prince. It had been him Des wanted to kill that night, not Eugenia. Des would have marched proudly to the hangman's noose if it was that blood on his hands. And why not? Des's eyes peeled open, a new, colder, more calculated rage in them. He knew it wouldn't change the fate awaiting him if he could manage to kill Alonzo, too. The prince deserved it. After all, it was his fault Eugenia was dead, not Des's. A twisted smile pulled at the corners of his mouth and spilled over his still blood-caked face. But how would he get out of here? The smile disappeared, and Des sat up, pulling away from the wall. The cell around him was empty, but for himself in a wooden cot. 
iron bars enclosed him against a corner of stone brick. He turned and studied the wall, searching for any sign of weakness. On the whole, it looked exactly as it should, unremarkable and impenetrable. As Des got on his hands and knees to feel along the bricks hidden beneath the shadow cast by the cot, he almost gasped when one budged beneath his fingers. Could it be a way out? Des glanced over his shoulder and listened hard, relaxing slightly when his ears picked up the low rumble of the sheriff snoring somewhere out of sight. It might work, but was it worth it? The logical, rational Des began to debate with the Des fixated on revenge. What would it solve, he asked himself. It won't bring Eugenia back from the dead or save me from the noose, but it'd make me feel a whole lot better. Biting his lip, Des put his head in his hands, unsure what to do. Alright guys, that wraps up my portion of the story collab. I think the next person going is actually Rayleigh's husband, Patrick, if I remember correctly. Um, but I did look over the document and I think there's a couple sections that still haven't been claimed. So if you're interested in doing the collab, just let Rayleigh Bradshaw know. I'll have links to the original like announcement video and the playlist of all the different parts, of course, down below. But yeah, just let Rayleigh know and I'm sure she'll get you on there if you want to be a part of this. And if I had to guess, we might do this again too. So if you don't have the chance to do it this time, there'll probably be a next time. But anyways, my biggest issue with the part that I did is that, I mean, it was supposed to be focused on the debate of like what to do next, but I had to put some sort of connection between Amara's part and then the debate part. So there was a lot before I actually got to the debate and the debate itself was not that interesting. So, eh. and then also I'm not that familiar with Save the Cat anyways. I've never read it. I don't have it. So I don't know. Hopefully it's okay and hopefully the other people don't hate it but i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch it let me know what you thought of it down in the comments but other than that i will wish you guys an amazing week and as always happy writing bye